My first memory is here at Camp Delwood where we are. I was seven and I came out here to spend two weeks. Indianapolis native Deborah Hearnsmith began her life's work earlier than most when her mother enrolled her in Girl Scouts. Growing up in the era of segregation and civil rights, the hope was that young Deborah would expand her horizons beyond the Indiana of the 50s and 60s. We went to the New York World's Fair in 64. We traveled to Canada to camp. So those were experiences that since then pushed me forward. Deborah graduated from Shortridge High School in 1966 and once again spread her wings. She made what she calls a conscious decision to attend a historically black college, Kentucky State University. Here in Indiana, I'd always been on the cusp of the integration, so I was always one of the few. In Kentucky, I felt a different kind of acceptance. There were more people like me. On, on historically black campus, you get news differently. You understand differently. You get different facts. It was a welcoming, great environment. To be in. Initially drawn toward politics, Deborah attended the 1968 Democratic National Convention and interned with the governor of Kentucky. Got accepted in law school and was moving in that direction, but it was not what I wanted to do. Following graduation, Deborah and her husband, Ebenezer Smith, moved back to Indy. I came out here to Delwood to direct camp for the summer while we kind of figured out what we were doing. The summer job soon evolved into a full-time commitment and Deborah began rising through the ranks from field executive to CEO of the Girl Scouts of Hoosier Capital Council. Under her direction, the organization found itself on the forefront of efforts to expand diversity and inclusivity. In the 70s, diversity was simply black and white. Everybody looked at diversity as how many African Americans you had, uh, and that was it. We started our Hispanic outreach program Oh, a little more than 20 years ago. Today, the Hispanic Outreach Program is one of the largest and most successful in the country. In addition, the Girl Scouts have expanded their outreach in the Burmese Chin community. Longtime friend Joyce Rogers says Deborah's legacy can also be seen in the High Tech Leadership and Learning Center at Camp Delwood that provides training to more than 18,000 volunteers. I think the Girl Scouts has provided so much as far as training and support, helping their leaders to hone in on their skills. And if you know Deb, she's a perfect example of that. She has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to leadership, when it comes to development, when it comes to working with and dealing with people. Deborah's leadership skills were put to the test in 2006 when the Girl Scouts of America announced it wanted to reduce the number of local councils. We had, at that point, six Girl Scout councils, six CEOs, six different bylaws, six different board of directors, all that needed to be merged. With the Hoosier Capital Council scheduled to host the National Convention in 2008, Deborah set the ambitious goal of uniting the councils prior to the event. I tease often that remember we had the license plates that wander Indiana? That's what I did. I wandered Indiana. I met people where they were. I did not ask people to come to Indianapolis. I just went out and, and met people one-on-one. -on -one. Then board chair Deb McLeod says Deborah's approach played a large role in accomplishing the Herculean task. We were the first council in the country to complete their realignment. We were done January 1st, 2007, so in 10 months. The result was the newly formed Girl Scouts of Central Indiana with agreements on facilities, staffing, and leadership. Deborah was named CEO. But that's just an example of W's quiet leadership that gets things done, moves us forward. Everybody works together for a common purpose whenever Debbie's around. Over the years, Deborah's dedication to empowering girls has been recognized with many honors from the Indiana Women's Commission's Torchbearer Award and the Sagamore of the Wabash to the IPS Hall of Fame. Now retired, Deborah lends her voice to a regular column in the Indianapolis Business Journal, and she continues to hear from the young women whose lives she has touched. But the sweet spot is when you get to work with girls. You meet them when they're six, and then suddenly they're 16, and the next thing you know they're 30 and introducing you to their children. That's the good stuff. Something about her personality. She could walk into a room full of girls, and each one of those girls would feel like they were somebody special. For whatever reason, we haven't sung her praises probably the way that we should. Now it's an opportunity for us to talk about it and say it and tell Deb how proud we are of her, 
how she has truly changed this community for the better. But I think she's an immensely unsung hero.